Mike Simpson. Um, we farm just out of Rangaroo, which is just north of Huntley. Uh, we milk 1250 cows um, through two herringbone sheds. I moved home eight years ago and contract milk for six years, and then the last two seasons I've stepped aside and uh, attempted to take over some of my dad's roles. He had a thought about what we wanted to do, and uh, we wanted to make things a bit easier for ourselves. Um, we were about two weeks off uh, having it all up and running, so it's quite exciting. Um, our boundary is the Waikato River and uh, the other boundary is the Wangapai Stream Outlet. Um, so we are very low lying, we're at the bottom of the table for all the drainage schemes, um, which is good in summer because we retain a lot of moisture, but through the winter we can have a lot of surface water. Um, paddocks that you can't even drive a two-wheeler through, ride a two-wheeler through, uh, yet alone feed out in. So uh, the challenge of us over winter is we're pretty much grass-based for two months because we just can't physically feed anything. The damage we did from July to August, uh, we, we paid the price for that pugging. It grew willow weed, outgrew the grass, and um, we so July, August, September we'd do the damage. We couldn't renew that grass until March and then the cows couldn't really eat it until July. So best part of 10 months that paddock's probably producing 50% of the grass that it should be. And um, it's not good for the environment back then. Calving this season was uh, one of our better ones. We had a dry winter, but uh, we still had to use sacrifice paddocks. Um, cows standing in mud all night. Um, having to draft new mums out of that mob in the paddock at times. Um, it was just a stressful job. It probably took an hour and a half for four people every day and that was, it was a, a lot of work. Um, this year we'll have our Springer mob on the feed pad so we'll literally be able to punch the numbers into the, the minder and the gate will draft them out while we're having breakfast. Um, and checking cows, our contract milker can just come down um, they're all in here. If you have to carve one, it's a 50 metre walk to the to the uh, head crush, and um, the management and ease of that is going to be a hundred times easier than what it has been. We used to store silage just on grass um, in secured paddocks. Sometimes we'd be chugging a four wheel drive to get to the to the face of the stack, um, and then having to get towed out. So uh, the challenges of that we won't ever have again. Um, feeding out, we had to take a feed out wagon around the whole farm, which could be uh, two Ks one way at some time. So the ease of what we've got now is we're feeding out probably 50 metres and eventually it'll be concrete that we drive on, but um, it's gonna take all the stress out of that. Um, getting wagons into paddocks, sometimes they're a bit tight. Training staff, um, health and safety of Un uncoupling the wagon in the mud. Uh, we went and had a look at about eight different systems um, and all the different ranges of roofs and um, bedding, matting, slats. Um, a lot of them were, the feed pad was shared amongst the cows so it would be a 900 cow farm and it's a 300 cow feed pad. Uh, where Our whole driver was to be able to get them off the land for the six weeks that they're dry at night and um, sleep them all at once. So we went to, uh, it's about a thousand cow feed pad. Uh, there's three feed pads in, in amongst the one under the roof and they can comfortably sleep with the six square meters of cow um, for that dry period. And it'll just save our pasture, it'll, it'll save the stress of worrying about it when, when you get 20 mils of rain overnight and um, you know where the cows are in the morning type thing. Uh, so our, our current system is two 44 aside hearing bones. Um, our contract milker employs six full-time staff and we need four minimum every single day to milk. With this new system we're going to have four full-time staff and we, we can get by with just two milking at a push we can probably get one um, get by with one so the ease of that, uh, we can have a better roster for staff, less hours a day worked, um, less milking times each day. We actually make a desirable job for the dairy industry uh, where before staff came and went because they were just in the shed for so long. 
Uh, we don't expect them to do too much outside of the shed, just feed the cows and milk them, but it still came at a cost of milking for seven or eight hours a day, every day. And um, The new system, one guy will be milking in the shed, one will be floating around at his yardsman, one will be on holiday, and one can be outside doing farm duties. So, With the effluent side of things, we went with the weeping wall. Uh, we looked at a range of options, and it seemed to be the obviously the, the best one. We, we could retain our existing pond. We got that drop tested, and that didn't um, that that passed. So the weeping wall, you know, contains all the solids and only the liquid going to the pond. Um, what we had to do over winter was get that right down and just um, divert all the cow sheds when they weren't being milked, and. You know, spread and it, you needed a few good days of fine weather before you're even able to spread it on the paddock. So it became a challenge at times. Um, but this new system with the roofing, we we shouldn't really create too much effluent, and it will definitely be manageable over the, the winter period. What we had to do in the past was have uh, bigger nozzles on our on our irrigator, and we couldn't go on the the inner axles because it becomes too, it's moving too slow and it was applied too heavy so what we can just due to having to pass through solids uh, what we can do now is put smaller nozzle caps on them um, put on less application and it should be a higher strength because it's the same it's getting recycled so we can actually manage that a whole lot better more efficient and um, we've got more area that we can put it on now due to it just being liquid we can, we are, our actual area now is opened up to the entire farm uh, we've talked to contractors and we can actually truck the dryer solids to a point and then use a muck spreader from there. So um, the cost of carting it with the muck spreader uh, was, would be very high, but talking to contractors, they're comfortable that we can actually cart it anywhere on the farm with trucks and then um, spread it from that point. So we've opened up the effluent area to our entire farm now, um, which is quite cool. Yeah, so you know, it's a cheap fertiliser really, we're just paying cartage and spreading. Uh, so it should should reduce our fertiliser costs, um, and you know should be able to maintain a low nitrogen usage. Really, so we used to have in-shed meal feeding systems that couldn't feed straight palm kernel. We could have a 60% blend, but now we can actually um, mix mix them how we want it. So the ratio we can decide on the day or the week, and um, make our own blends up. Really, we've gone away from the the whole driver was to feed a lower lower cost meal on the feed pad so we can actually feed three times as much uh, feed on the feed pad as the in-shed meal feeding system so um, we're going to be able to really fully feed our cows all year round. We've got three flood wash chambers on the feed pad and one on the cow shed. Uh, we had to put an electronical, uh, we had to put an electrical box in so that they couldn't all flood wash at once um, and We'll be able to recycle the same water. The water goes to the weeping wall and then back to the pond, and then the pond pumps it to the tanks so that it's um, it's improving the entire effluent product itself, not just recycling the same water over and over. We can we can flood wash you know up to six times a day really, if we wish.